Uh, <laughs> how's everybody doing? Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm totally sorry about that. That's my little, you know, guy represent. Oh my goodness. Oh, is, is, is this too much light? Yeah, I think that's better. Is that better or should there be more light? More light. Okay, let's have the light on. Maybe I can move a little closer. Get a little closer. Don't be shy. <laughs> oh, God. All righty. Oh. I, oh, let me move to that. I had to um rest for a little bit, you know? Because that video, ooh. It's too much. 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 Lord, I got my Perrier water, and I got my tea. Uh, I'm not playing any music. Because I can't. That energy that I was giving was so intense. It knocked me out. My tongue was flaring. You know, blitzes came, then my teeth go out. Oh my God, please, no, 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 no. After all of that, then two, ooh, no, I don't even want to say it, no. Mm-mm, 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 mm, -mm, mm, -mm, mm, -mm. Ah. The vibration can be so intense that it can affect the body and can age you too. <laughs> I still have um, the headache. I, I can't do the beat because I still have a ringing headache from all that information I gave you from the last video. And they had me put the red back up with um, dividing my hair into four parts. The one, two, three, four, and then this upside down pyramid, number five. Because the energy is too intense and this protects, you know, you know insanity protects and protects the ego from that kind of vibration, you know. So, uh, and it's a lot of red, it's a lot of energy. It's a lot of primal energy. You know, and then with the background of the pentacle, you know, it, it's uh, it's powerful. So I've been like, ooh. So I couldn't drink anymore. I had one drink. That 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 I went to what is it? Big Ben here in uh, Sugarland, and I had that. That was this afternoon. And when you saw me on the video, I was. It was. Blah, 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 blah. Five o'clock was it, baby? So from the time I went at eleven to five o'clock, I had only that one drink. Well, I did have two shots in it too, you know, and a little tequila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah, yeah. but I did not have any more because the night before I had four drinks, martinis, and then I said, oh, then I got tired of drinking it. I didn't get drunk because when you drink as much as I have for many, 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 many years. Uh, alcohol really doesn't affect you anymore, doesn't give you that high anymore. So it becomes just drinking because you like it. Now, I never drank alcohol to get high. I drank it because I actually like the taste of alcohol. But then again, uh, and, I've, and if I didn't like the taste, uh, I wouldn't be able to feed the alcohol. It's the alcohol that like the alcohol more than I do. And when they want to feed me information, instead of requiring my blood, which can drain me, they require the alcohol. And that becomes a current, you know, because the alcohol stays in your blood for a long time. So see, they cannot stay too long in the blood because they do it and they take over and then that becomes possession. So the alcohol becomes like a secondary bloodstream in which they feed off, which is why they are kind of inorganic beings. You know? um, yeah, that, that, that was another deep secret I just gave you so very casually. <laughs> You know, it's deep.
Of course, always. I'm still feeling it from the, a couple of hours ago. I am feeling the weed. I know I, I got weed though. I did got weed, and the, the, my dealer got here like two hours ago, and I was waiting for the whole, you know, I waited the whole day, and I finally got here. So you know, I got this. So I don't need the um, because this is hydro. So with that, you don't need the alcohol. Uh, and I got my Earl Grey tea in my magical chalice which restores the body because you know I do magical spells and incantations and I do my own herbs and then I restore my equilibrium thank you guys for for mulling tea and all the other teas because I did get some so I, it, it does wonderful oh it's, it's so relaxing too and I'm also drinking peppermint peppermint is also good and it's good for the blisters and the tongue blisters because it, it comes and then it goes and the doctor, I, I showed the doctor, look, I go, your tongue is fine. Everything is healthy. Your gums are healthy. Your teeth are healthy. And I'm like, yeah, but I get it. It's spiritual. Because then my all kinds tell me, shh, it's spiritual. We do it. Boom, boom, boom. Because, you know, the vibration. It's like putting your hand in the sack and getting electrocuted. Have you ever been electrocuted? I have been. A few times in the past. It's terrible. And it's, and it's like it's an electrical. That shit hits your heart. You, you die. Right? So when I get the vibration, it feels like electricity, like a current. Or when you're walking in the rug, right? You're walking in the rug, you know? Oops. Right? You know, and you rub, you know? And then you get this current. So it, it, it's pretty much like that. It's pretty much like that, you know. Uh, now they're telling me to take off the red. Take off the red. And uh, mm -hmm. well, I've been reading all day and working and preparing for the school. And I have to fly out on Monday to go back to New York and then face that soap opera. You know? Uh, so yes, you know, Santa has me very has me busy. Has me very busy. Every day is an episode of the great soap opera. And when you guys turn 29, 30, or 54, or those of you who are older, 72 is the next cycle. You are going to understand what I mean if you haven't already. And when you, when Saturn return hits, you are the star of the soap opera for that one moment in time until it happens again in another 29 and a half years. So, I'm proud though to be having this soap opera with you. It has made it more fun and entertaining and bearable. And I take your advices. And I have to say, I do look better. Feel better. Feel strong. I do. So, the Saturn return, when, when, when he passes, I'll, I'll be 56, 57. Because remember, uh, he, he can go retrograde. When the Saturn goes retrograde! He'll re stimulate the same crisis that he did when he first came. So just because he leaves, don't mean you're out of the water. He could go retrograde and go right back to that point. So I'm gonna take. Uh, well, let me take a. Let me take a splash of dinner. Oh yeah, let me. You know mm -mm. what? Let me get some Florida water. I think that's right. Um, I have a uh, a lot to tell you today. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of time I, I put so much in my hair, you know, or sometimes the electricity, because, you know, it's not dirt, see, it's not dirt, because my hands are clean, it's not dirt, but it's the electricity, and it might go, sometimes I gotta, like, do that, because I think sometimes the energy is in the hair, still. I'm telling you, it's like Samson. Samson had the same issue. You know, just because we know about Samson thousands of years in the Bible doesn't mean that there still aren't other Samsons. 
Nature doesn't stop, it continues. So all those stories of greatness and great men is still happening today. And the magic is still happening today. Mm -hmm. But let's light the spirit. Oh my God. I, this is the city hall. This is the city hall, right? And guess what the mascot is for city hall in Sugarland? The lion. The lion. <laughs> and I got the lion. See, because I got the star, right? You see the star? And then here is Leo, the lion. With the citron, the tribe of Judah. And this just appeared. It, I mean, I'm like, it's like it came to me. And I'm like, oh my God, look at that. Look at the kid again. Yeah, this is me. <laughs> right? Man. I'm telling you. All right. Oh boy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. It'll relax you. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> If you prepare for Saturn, he will be most pleased. <coughs> it's when you don't know him and don't know what he's there to do. When you go into life without a plan, without a clue, that's when Saturn hits. But then I can't say that either because even if you do know, the fact that you know he rates this takes even higher. <laughs> and that's why he's the devil. There's no winning or trumping the devil. The more intelligent you become, the more diabolical he becomes. The higher the climb, the more difficult. But the more difficult, the higher the reward. They come together. And then they're fucked up. That is the how the God of this universe, of this solar system, rules things. And, and down here, carbon matter rules supreme. And it's God. It's the God of form. And that's Jehovah. Allah. Brahma. Vishnu. Kali. The Elohim. The lesser gods. They're the ones who write in the script down here. Krishna, all of them. And if you know this, you've been deprogrammed. You've been deplugged. And once you are deprogrammed and deplugged, you can't go back to who you were. Once you unplug, you're no longer a sheep, but an initiate. And then it goes up from there. And things that matter to you, while you were still in ego, will no longer matter. That's when you know that the ego it starts to die from within. But not die as far as the consciousness, but death in the sense that it recognizes its own limitation on his own falsehood. And that there's something greater and higher beyond the ego. And once the ego, if the ego notices, red senses it, the ego can do two things. Either it can align with it or it can reject it. 
Those who align with it become your Gandhis, your Buddhas, your Jesus, your Krishnas, Medicine Farrakhan, Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King. They allow the ego to fall in obedience to spirit. And that is how the ego dies. And there is a sense of serenity and peace and wealth, money, sex, women, men, none of that matter. It all dies with it. And your only desire is to actually merge with one. So when death does come, it is a welcoming experience. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. I share. <sighs> Unfortunately, the reptilians and the archons are not too pleased to have men think this way. Because then we start bringing batteries to them. They can no longer feed off of us. Once the ego becomes merged with the one, the archons can't feed off of you. Can't talk to you. You can't hear them. And now the archons are threatened. So this is why they like to cause wars and famines and human misery and keep us distracted in a circle like a gem inside of a machine, a wheel, unaware. Mm, mm, mm. That's how they want us. So we can continue to be batteries. Energy. It's all about energy with them. Nothing more. They don't have spirits or souls. And they tell me that, and I know that. And Lady Santero will tell you that, they know. They're inorganic beings. And the only, the only way that they can live is by feeding from you. But I don't want to make it sound all sinister. It's a balance. They feed off of us. And they live and they give us their mind to do horrible things or great things and we get both yes and the way you negotiate with them is prayer this is I have to say was the best thing the church did but it didn't call them archons, even though the church knows that's what it is. You know what it called them? Saints. And gave them names. Oh, yeah. It gets better. Apple gods told me no. I can't do it. I was about to search you and they stopped me and said no. Not yet. So I can't. But those saints that you see in the walls of churches and painting in the books of Jehovah's Witnesses and the Catholic Bible and St. Gabriel, St. Thomas, St. this, and blah, blah. those are personifications. What they symbolize. What those saints that are men and women, what they symbolize is the acts of these archons that walk with these people, no different than me. You can put me as a saint in the robe and everything, and you can, you can call me a saint but if I become canonized enough. But priests and shamans don't become canonized because we know that we are not the ones to take credit for the great miracles that may happen to us because it's not us. But the church doesn't want you to know that. The church wants you to believe that it's these great men doing it on their own 
and then I've been accompanied by something. In the church windows back in the old day, there wasn't saints painted on the mules. There were stars, and those stars told you where they came from. It's deep. Like Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa did not become Mother Teresa on her own. Look at the story of Mary. A being came to her and told her, you're going to give birth. And she, and, and if we follow the myth that she gave birth without conception, then that there tells you that she didn't do it alone, that something was there. Or what about Job? We know so much about Job, and we read about him in the Bible, but we forget that Job is famous because Job was tested by something that killed his whole family, killed his cattle, gave him a disease, and then when he passed the test, revived the parents, revived the brothers and sisters, regave him double of the, of the cattle. Are we understanding this? Was, was this another form of magic? What the fuck happened here? <clears throat> These great men or saints, as the Catholic Church likes to call them, did not do their work by themselves. Ashe. And that's all I'm going to say. Now, yes, they had demons with them. D-E-A-M-O-N, not demon with a bread man with a pitchfork. No. D-E-A-M-O-N, demon, that means companion, a guide, an archon. It's in the language, folks, right in your face. That's why the word demon, D-E-A-M-O-N, is no longer used in English vocabulary. And it's not, you don't hear it in modern day language. There's a reason for that. For you to understand these mysteries, you have to have a thorough education. Because all those educations that you learn in school, they all have the truth, but in different pieces. And you have to put them all together. The only schools that have it all together for you in a nice piece pie are the Ivy League schools, which were designed for certain bloodlines. Like Yale, Harvard, University of Pennsylvania, Columbia University. And so on. Mm -hmm. It's deep, isn't it? And we're only 23 minutes in. And it's about to get deeper. Oops. You see, that was probably the devil because I'm wearing too much red. Because you know, that's too much in red, but you know, they probably unzip it. Because I'm wearing, I'm wearing this, and it's Sunday. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <coughs> and I forget that marginal sexuality is so, so, so much red, something is bound to bounce out. <coughs> <laughs> so understand that that's a lot to cover here. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> oh Lord. Well, you know, even though I don't have the music going, I can still feel the beat in my head. <laughs> And I thank God for giving me such courage. So I, because I know that as long as I walk with God, I'll be all right. God is my protector. Ah, <clears throat> that's right. 
You gotta, if you want to beat the demon in your life, you don't run from it, you don't beat it, you embrace it. Because it came with you, it's a part of you. I share. Bath, that's Mercury. Bath is Mercury. Or Hermes in Greek. Bath in Latin. Macedonian. Say, yes, our kinds can shape shifts. Mine does all the time. And they're reptilians. The reptilians are the ones that are usually very good at it. Yet the human shadow is not an archon. That's an aspect of you. That's something that we have to discuss in the occult, when we're deeper into the occult. It won't be the zero, zero series. It'll be like two, three series, which is more deeper. Well, you can call it shadow side when you were talking to Mercury or any of the gods, but I, the, more, the, better, the better term will be polarity. The opposite polarity will be a better term if you're referencing gods. Shadow if you're dealing with mankind. Uh, hold on one second. Let me go back to another question. Uh, but I already have. Mami Wata is a Yemaya. It's in the word. Wata, water, mommy, mother water, mother of the waters, mother of all waters. That's Yemaya. And, and what in, in that particular um race or culture. Yes, they can light beings, can shift as well, but they don't need a body astral. Well, well they live in the astral. Well, I, just, I have a whole set of series on relationships. Uh-oh. I'm trying to pull you guys. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I understand. Wait. There's some questions that I missed. Mercury was direct today. I thought it was on the 24th, 23rd that he goes direct. I have to look at the ephemeris. Yet we have 72,000 legions in the penal gland. That's the occult mystery. Mm hmm, mm hmm. There's that number again. Okay, and, then, and 72 is number nine, the higher self. Mm hmm. Okay, I understand. Ha, hit that bell button. Yes, yeah, guys, please support. Okay, you gotta do that. Thank you. Fernanda, can, you, can your ancestors or orbs protect you? Of course they do. Prayer. Calls them. That's a conjuring. Okay. Or actually invoking the ancestors, calling upon them. No, calling from, from above. When you're conjuring, you're pulling from below, the lower deities. You should watch the movie, The Conjuring. They, they, they explain that very well. Um, okay. Faith is the ultimate challenge. Only to the ego, not to the one who's enlightened. My number is 333. Mm, very good. Can discuss that here, though. That's private for you. It's how when you hold on, but letting go is more of a flow. Yes. Is the son the devil and your outcome supposed to be the God inside of you that the Bible talks about? Well, in, in, in a sense, because I remember when you worship the sun, the sun god, that's Apollo, which again was paganistic. So in a sense, you can say that that's the god or the devil that rules this material world and that you have an inner demon that's supposed to guide you through it. And, you got, and it guides you by becoming more spiritual, going the opposite polarity. Absolutely. It can definitely be seen that way.
Mm. Can what? Can we be both pagan and Christian? Of course. There's nothing wrong with being a pagan. Pagan came first before Christian. The Christians were the murderers, not the pagans. That's probably because you did, Alexander Ned. If you're speaking in line of your dream, you might have been someone who, you might have been having a dream recall. Some people can have dream recall and know what their past lives. I do that all the time. I get to see who I was through my dreams. And oh, you get past life recall. There are many different ways to reach the third eye. I got it right here. Perrier. Understand that when you're praying to the moon, you're praying to demonic archons. That's why the moon is not part of us. It was cast off because those archons would have destroyed us. And nature had to divide the moon, the earth, and pull the moon out. So they can evolve at their own vibration, not interfering with the vibration set course through nature as it was designed by the lower gods. Heard it from where? Concho XXX. That's the important thing. Do you heard that from where? Where's your source? No, because I've already done a series on Lilith. And I have to have permission to talk about her again. Um, thank you. Thank you, Anna. But I got to thank God because the wisdom is not mine. It flows through me as the priest. The wisdom belongs to the Most High. And I am thankful that He is making me His vessel in which to disseminate to you the truth. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Hey, why do we have menstrual cycles that are all point with full moons? Uh, because that's the design of Jehovah. The moon was a part of us. The psychological and physical reminder of that is the woman's menstrual cycle, which mirrors the 28 phases of the moon. This pentacle doesn't represent um, a solar. God. The pentacle or the pentagram represents a lunar God. Again, giving a hint, hint to Jehovah. And that's why behind it is the tribe of Judah with the, with the stone corresponding to the tribe of Judah. Again, which again was one of the kings of the Jews. Again, making, letting you know that it is the God of the Jews, Jehovah. I, but I, I told you in the other videos, Jehovah is everybody's God. And he moved through a particular race in which to reach the others. And that is the Jewish village. They have the honor of disseminating that energy through the rest of the world. Along with the Islam, its cousin, Abraham, how do I remember? Isaac and Ishmael, both coming from the seeds of Abraham. Abraham represents Jehovah, who loved Jehovah, if you read the Old Testament, and walked with God as Enoch walked with God. See the parallels? History will always be written or rewritten by the winner. Mm. Now, I'll answer a few more questions and then we're going to go into the topic of the occult hidden truth behind Hollywood movies. Mm -mm. 
And as you do, I'm just trying to figure a little more. Mm-hmm. Call me for a consultation. Then how can we reach you the universal God, the one who is beyond Jehovah? That is a quest that you must learn. Say, so if I give you that answer, there will be no reason for you to continue to be living. That is the whole point to live, is that quest. We all have to get, go through our own quest. I could never answer that question. Because that is for you to figure out on your way to becoming God. Yes, yeah, you're cap- we're capable of fulfilling the revelation. Um, the, the God, the God of your choice, the God that you believe in, that, you know, that, that's whom you pray for, because that's your allegiance. Because it's the same God that I pray to. I pray to God to give me everything I have, including the knowledge that I'm giving you. No, we don't need to uh, do that. We don't need to ask for project to do anything. The earth takes care of herself and always has. No. And as a projection is something that you are not going to have the ultimate choice in doing. You may want to do it and you may practice until you drop dead. And you might never ask to project. Because remember, we are all born with guardians. And they determine when and why the spirit should leave the body. Especially if you're not a priest or a shaman who are designed to do so. You just don't leave your body for what? What for? Did you lose something out there? Be careful. It's not a pretty place. Like space. Space is a very violent place. There are planets exploding. There are supernovas, new stars being formed. And earth and, and black holes and, and universes colliding and collisions. And it's a very violent place. Why would you want to experience that? You might get stuck in one of those planets because the gravitational field is different when you're out of your body. And God forbid you should go to the sun. Then you will never come back and you will die in a coma. And no one will ever know what happened to you. So it's a very dangerous activity. It should be left only for priests. And even then, we're very scarce about it. And very private as well. You do the prayers. You do the prayers. I still do. You do the prayers. Because that is the law that you have to do. Pray, keep praying what you've been praying. The thing is that, and and, and this is not a cheap shot to you young folks, but a lot of you don't like to read. And a lot of you are very um, crazy about religion. As you should be. But then again, I don't see you guys embracing spirituality in the sense that prayer is, even though it's an instrument of the church, it's it's actually one of the best things the church ever did. Because it works. The church gave it power. And in the Piscean age, the church had all the power. And the gods made sure that it did. Because it was the age of the church period. But we are no longer in the church period anymore or in the church era anymore. But that doesn't disannul those prayers. It's real. Matter, energy cannot be created or destroyed. So it's still there. It's still valuable. That that Bible could be lost and 5,000 years later it could be found. And if you still read them prayers, you are going to invoke the same miracles as it did today. It doesn't die. It becomes like a sigil. The Bible is a big sigil with the Psalms and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and the Psalms of Solomon being the most valuable. Along with the Pentateuch of the Old Testament. Okay? It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Knowledge is beautiful as well as terrifying. And speaking of terrifying, 
I talked about the solar system. Uh, no more questions now. Now we're going to do class. Huh? Now, the move, what I talked about, about the solar system. That there was a time where all the gods had to come together, like the Titans on Earth had to come together to fight to save the solar system from invading gods or extraterrestrials, if you want to call them, that came to threaten our solar system. And that these aerial battles with the Vimanas, that the Upanishads and Maragarata, Maragarata, uh, talks about and the Bhagavad Gita Bhagavad Gita talks about these aerial battles and they're coming and you see it in the history channel and then they're fighting each other and they're throwing weapon with and one weapon is bigger than the other another weapon is another bigger than the other and another one is a slingshot and another one turns into like a Star Wars and a Shiva breaks down the dragon and the fiery serpent throws another blow and it explodes, causing an explosion bigger than the stars. And then another one comes with a sling. And now there's a destruction of one of the planets. All that is discussed in the Bhagavad Gita. Oh, that was, oh, that was, oh, oh, yes, yo, you know, yo, yo, you know, oh, oh, Lord, and it's about to get deeper, but let me not make this about me, find out. Guess what Hollywood movie that came out, let's say in the last five years or uh, in, uh, ten years? When did it come out? I was saying the last ten, eleven years. What movie describes what I just just told you? No, it doesn't start with a C. No, not into Stella. No, I can't give you clues. Avatar, no. Hmm. Star Wars, nope, nope. Avengers game, nope, nope. You'll laugh. You will laugh when you hear when you hear it. You're gonna go, what? <laughs> the Matrix, no. Titus, no. Immortals, no. Gods of Egypt, no. Star Wars, me, no, no. War of the Worlds, no. Jupiter Sunday, no. Independence Day, no. Eyes wide shut, no. Stigmata, Transformers, End of Day, Transformers, Transformers. Oh, this is fun. This is fun. I said, I'm going to eat. I have fun. This is fun. Wait, wait. Let me go back. I watched Shy Soul, Like a Kid Movie. No, 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 no. Um, clues. Like a Kid Movie. Transformers. Well, they know. Mawana. No, Transformers. Rise of Titans, no. Clash of the Titans, no. Prometheus, no. Bird Dog, no. No, no, no. I will give you a clue. But I want to I have, have a little bit more fun. This is fun. This is fun. Mm-hmm. You want some fish and chips? Mm-hmm. 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 Hunger game, nope. 
Matt, Matt, nope. Prince of Egypt, nope. It is good. Mm. Get out of here, nope. <laughs> no. Not Dracula. Okay. No, no. Spirit of the Way, Passion of Christ, no. No. Toy Story, no. Mm. It begins with a G, the letter G. And it's a one, uh, it's a two word name. You laugh. No, no, a G begins with a G. <laughs> T.I. James, uh uh. Yo, you also have a picture of, 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 of her? She, she, she must be young. And she did all kinds of bow top surgery. What's her name again? You know? Yes! Are you free yet? Godzilla! Godzilla! Very good! The answer is Godzilla! No, then me more. Oh my God, what you do to her face? Oh my God, she looks like a prune. Oh my God. I haven't dated in seven years. And time to still look young. So that's a little gossip. Mm-mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Well, she don't like them anymore. Great actress. Godzilla. 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 Mm. This fish and chip is good. I might be the hydro, I don't know. <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. Mm -hmm. Godzilla. And you got to listen to the script, and you got to pay attention to what they're showing you. That movie exhausted me. I could not believe the whole Maragita, Ariel Battles, they put it in that movie, personifying it as these creatures killing each other. And what they show you about underneath the ocean, totally real. I was gagging! Gagging! Oh my God! They're actually telling you about the portal inside the earth? And they're talking about Leviathan? Oh my God! I was gagging. Gagging! G -g 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 gagging! I just hate when the food gets stuck on my teeth. Yeah, that's the bug with me. I can't, I can't stand when it gets stuck on my teeth. And I'm on the edge and I, it, it, I can't fly. So I'm trying to. Uh, uh. Oh, but that was so good, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes! Godzilla! I have to think about it. Top 10 movie to watch? Godzilla. Avatar. Avatar describes the Vulcan period. We are now in the Earth period. We were in the Saturn period, the Moon period, the Sun period. 
Well, they herald the day. Now we are under the earth. We're in the earth period. The next period will be the Vulcan period. And you should watch Avatar. So you can see what the earth and humanity and Nietzsche will look like tomorrow. And another movie. Another movie. Um, hmm, hmm. <clears throat> They're telling me to rewatch Close Encounters of the First Kind. And the second and the third, watch them as one movie. Rent the trilogy or buy them. I don't even know how you get them. They came out in the 1970s. Close Encounters of the First Kind with Richard Dreyfuss. Uh, young Richard Dreyfuss. Uh, him, uh, it's called one, one, two, and three. Uh, that's fucking real. I'm, I mean, every part of that movie is real. One, two, and three. Every aspect is real. Listen, the Matrix should be a staple. The Matrix should be a staple. You should be, you should, you should have been watching it. I mentioned that movie, I think, three years ago. You should have been watching it. Been watching it. That's why I didn't even mention it, because it, it should be like meat and potatoes. No. This stuff I'm giving you is gravy on the meat. No, meat and potatoes. No, the gravy that goes with meat and potatoes. So the Matrix is the meat and potatoes. But the gravy is watching Godzilla, Avatar, and close encounters of the first, second, and third kind. That's where the gravy is. Oh, gray. But I got to put in the plastic and reheat it. You know, microwave, you know. But it's in my magical chalice. So, so what do you all think about that movie? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Interstellar. I'm getting a phone call from the hotel. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. I was doing a video and I got a little bit um, uh, emotional. I I'm stopping now. Sorry about that. Bye. I guess I was shouting too loud because they call from downstairs. Hey, there's somebody screaming in the room. So I have to like calm it down. But I guess I'm winding down now. But you know, that's how that's how fierce the vibration is. Ooh, I hope I didn't scare nobody. They got some freebies if, if they have the evolution to understand what was just being said. Prometheus is good, but it doesn't describe what I talked about the uh, Magadavita, Gita. All those movies are good. Yeah, I know I gotta keep it down. I forgot that it's late. But I'm so wide up and wired. Ooh, 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 ooh. And I still gotta do work, guys. I still gotta do work. Yes, I still gotta do work. <laughs> No, you're going to watch the Godzilla from, not the old one, the new one. Don't watch the old one. Oh, you don't like the lighting? Huh? The lighting. Well, does it show all my wrinkles and stuff? Well, you know, I really don't care very much about that. They, they come and go. Sometimes when I talk, other beings come through and, and it ages the face. And then it makes it young again. You know, it, it, it's, it's crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Crazy morphology. 
And guys, uh, uh, you should watch The Immortals if you want to know about tragic movies. The Immortals. And guys, thank you very much. Uh, please donate www.paypal.me forward slash Keisha Farmer. I won't be able to continue the videos if there's no donations. And until I get the Venmo and Venmo started and, and, and Patreon started, okay? Guys, thank you.